So this Raw show opened up with Charlotte. Naya. Oh, I got, I got to say something before we get to this. So Umberto Carrillo is okay. Yes. He, if he needed to wrestle tomorrow, he could. They may do an injury angle out of it. They may not. You know, but but he's fine. Um, but that was not the planned finish. So we'll get to that in a moment. First off, Charlotte and I and Shayna versus Mandy, Dane, and Asuka. So they go about two minutes, and all of a sudden, they're standing in the ring yelling at each other, and there is Alexa Bliss. Her music hits. She is on the stage, on She's her on the- swing set. I have no idea how they got a swing set out there, and none of the wrestlers noticed, but they didn't. And, and and not just a swing set, but that little horse deal was there, too. She's got a horse. She's got her doll. She says, we, meaning her and this doll, are going to keep an eye on someone. Looks like it was Shayna, huh? So it looked like to me. So they go to commercial. They come back. Man, and I felt so bad for, for, for Shayna having to sell that. Sh- you know, like of all the people, you choose like the legit one. The, le- the least cartoon person there is the one that has to be in the cartoon. It was... Something. Well, what happened was the starting the comeback, and, and there's a lot to talk about in this match that I won't even bother. But it wasn't good. So it finally, wasn't a good match anyway. No, not at all. Shayna, jeez, Shayna is trying to walk, but her leg gives out, and she tries to stand, and her leg gives out again. And obviously, her leg didn't really give out. So the story is that Alexa has used magic to cause Shayna to be unable to walk. And so Oscar yeah, takes this, in. This, this stuff really sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what's funny, Dave? Yeah. Okay, you know what's what... funny? I'm going to tell you what's funny. Okay, tell me what's funny. So you're telling me that there are people in WWE that say that blood and guts set this business back 20 years. 30. 30 years. <laughs> and meanwhile, 30 fucking years ago, I saw this same bullshit that I'm seeing with Alexa Bliss, with fucking pa- Papa pa- Shango, yeah. the same shit coming out of his head, the same voodoo... It's the same shit from 30 years ago, and they're trying to tell me that a War Games match set this business back 30 years? Are you fucking kidding me? You know what? The thing with the Papa Shango stuff was, it's like, it didn't work 30 years ago. No, it was terrible. It was horrible. it It was terrible. It didn't draw. I mean, the whole thing of, if you remember... You know, that big thing on Ultimate Warrior, you know, being such a disappointment as champion, as a draw. It was an Ultimate Warrior. It was who they lined him up against. It was partially Ultimate Warrior, too. But, you know, because he couldn't follow Hogan. Um, he you know, couldn't follow Hogan. But, my God, who's who feuding with Papa Shango? Yeah, I know. I I went through and I rewatched some of those, those superstars from 1992. Oh, my God. Like, some of the stuff was good because, you know, you had Shawn Michaels in there and Bret Hart and guys like that. But then they would do the thing where the warrior barfed because of Papa Shango. And literally, because it's 1992 and there's three months between pay-per-views or whatever, they showed that, they recapped that for, like, ten straight television shows. Ten straight weeks I had to watch the warrior barfing over and over again. Because I guess they thought it was just some groundbreaking, awesome storyline that Papa Shango used voodoo on the WWE champion, WWF champion. But it was horrible. And this, in 2020, 2021, was also horrible. I think it's more horrible now because because it's a completely different fan base. I mean, the fan base back then, um, I mean, it was so less wrestling-oriented fan base as compared to now to be, you know, like... And and now they're trying to bring this in, especially the two things on the show tonight. It's like it's like all this talk about, you know, women, you know, that they're treating women, you know, athletes and all this and that. And then you do the Eva Marie stuff, which is like take which is, again, going back 10 years or 15 years, whatever it was. And then the Alexa Bliss stuff, which is going back 30 years. You know, one one is stupid. And the other is like it's it, the other is what it is, but it's exactly what it used to be in wrestling. You know, you take someone who's you know a model who's not a very good wrestler at all, and you highlight her and push her like she's a big superstar because she's a model. And it's like, you know, I mean, fine, whatever. It's cosmetic business, but don't give me shit about what it is. You know, like um, trying to pretend it's not what it is because, you know, ah, just. You know, I mean, it, it actually really bothers me, you know, because 
for just a lot of different reasons, you know, that, that they pretend it's not. And it, it is, you know, it's like, that's what it is because they're, it's right there. You got to be a fool not to see, you got to be not a fool. You got to be blind not to see it, you know? So, and then the other thing, yeah, the Alexa Bliss stuff. It, I mean, it, you know, you put that in there and it's like, if, whatever, it was just, it, you know, I, I just felt bad for the women in that match. Dude, because... we all knew it was coming. Every one of those women looked so annoyed in the ring at the end of this match, looking up there as Alexa's on her swing set. Oh, laughing. it sucks for them. It completely sucks, it sucks for it, every it, single it, one of them. It's the female fiend. She's going to be ruining this division. Yeah, because the thing is, is that you, she was the star in that segment. It was not Charlotte Flair, the star. It was not, certainly not Shayna Baszler, Nia Jax, or Mandy Rose, or Dana Brooke. The star of that segment was Alexa Bliss. She was made to be the star in all of them, and they got to go out there and put her shit over, and it's just going to take every one of them, um, you know, especially like Asuka, you know. Um, I mean, it's not going to kill them because we've seen it before. It doesn't kill anyone. It just takes them down a notch. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.